what is the worst sugar that's out there on a label? Well, I could be gimmicky and I could break down and say these are the top five worst sugars, but the fact is that wouldn't be staying true to science. And you need to know that in science, there's something called operationalizing the variable, and that is defining what truly is the worst in different categories. Sugar is bad, we know that, I don't need to tell you that, but I do need to explain where sugars are bad and what sugar is bad in each respective category. For example, what sugar is worse when it comes down to gaining fat? What sugar is worse when it comes down to uh, disrupting your gut biome, et cetera, et cetera. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's dive right into this. Hey, I do ask, it's very important that you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon. And when you hit that bell icon, select all notifications. We're posting videos every single day, and if you're not getting a notification every single day, then that means that your notifications aren't set to the right setting. So please, please hit that bell. It helps us out so much. Okay, now I'm gonna break this down into three categories. Now, in the second category, I'm gonna talk about which sugar is going to make you the most fat. So make sure you're keeping it locked in through this. But the first category we have to talk about is one that people generally understand, and that is the world of the glycemic index. So which sugar is worse in this category? You see, we look at glucose, and glucose gives us a scale of 100 on the glycemic index scale, which means that it spikes our glucose, it spikes our blood sugar really high. But did you know that there is a sugar that is worse than glucose out there? It's called maltose. So if you see maltose on a label, run the other way. See, maltose, believe it or not, has a glycemic index of 105. How is that even possible? That means it spikes your blood sugar so high that it's spiking it higher than regular glucose, okay? Now, where the heck are you gonna find maltose? Maltose is coming from grains, so usually like starchy grains, things like that. You'll have it in small amounts there, but then what happens is people will extract it from that and use it as a sweetener. So usually like a hard candy or anything that's going to need a concentrated amount of sweetener in a low volume. So it's hidden in a lot of things. Now maltose is one of those things that's gonna kick you right out of ketosis. It's gonna ruin a low carb diet, but it may not make you immediately fat. It's just gonna mess up your metabolism so you're fat maybe six months from now. Now here's where it really messes you up. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a study that was done by Harvard University that found that subjects that consume high glycemic uh, sweeteners or high glycemic carbohydrates, irrespective of calories, so whether it was five calories or 100 calories, ended up, of course, having a high blood sugar spike followed by a high insulin spike. But here's what's really crazy. If you look at the image on the screen, this shows an fMRI scan. They put these patients under an MRI and they found that the portion of their brain that gives them a sensation of want just lit up like a Christmas tree meaning it made them want to eat. So that is how a high glycemic food can ultimately make you fat later on down the line. But let's talk about the one that you really are interested in. That's the world of fructose, the one that's gonna trigger de novo lipogenesis. De novo lipogenesis literally, literally means new fat creation. It is creating new fat. Well, guess what? When you look at fruit, you see fructose, wow, that's only a 19 on a glycemic index scale. So compared to maltose, that sounds like a perfectly healthy carbohydrate. But here's where operationalizing the variable comes in handy, right? This is where we look at things. Okay, because it may not be bad in the glycemic index scale, but it's bad because it is the one that is gonna get stored as fat very fast. You see, de novo lipogenesis is where your body creates fat from carbohydrates. And fructose, specifically high fructose corn syrup, is really bad because as soon as it's going through digestion, it's dropping into the portal vein and it's going into the liver. And when it goes to the liver, it goes through de novo lipogenesis and it stores as fat specifically around the liver and around your midsection. So if you're gaining abdominal fat, there's a good chance it's from carbohydrates. If you have a fatty liver, there's a good chance it's from this high fructose corn syrup. Now fructose and high fructose corn syrup do some really gnarly things. Not only do they go straight to the liver, they also directly activate the enzymes, the DNL enzymes, that turn on de novo lipogenesis. And then they turn on the master switch called SREB1, which is sort of the, like, the general of the army of de novo lipogenesis. So basically, not only does it activate the soldiers that create new fat, it activates the general and the political parties that turn the soldiers on as well. So we have a double whammy effect. And then, well guess what? It doesn't just cause fat accumulation, it stops what is called beta oxidation. So that means it stops fat burning from occurring at the mitochondrial level. So sure, it's one thing that you're creating new fat, but creating new fat wouldn't be as bad if simultaneously you were burning old fat. Well guess what? This actually stops old fat from being burned, 
while simultaneously allowing new fat to be created. De novo lipogenesis, in my opinion, is probably the worst of the worst. You have to be really careful with that. I wanna read you a portion of the abstract that came from Digestive Disease Science. And it says, several properties of fructose metabolism make it particularly lipogenic, meaning fat storage. Fructose is absorbed via the portal vein and delivered to the liver in much higher concentrations as compared to other tissues. Fructose increases protein levels of all de novo lipogenesis enzymes during its conversion into triglycerides, which is the storage form of fat. Additionally, fructose supports lipogenesis in the setting of insulin resistance as fructose does not require insulin for its metabolism and it directly stimulates SREB P1C, a major transcriptional regulator of DNL. What that simply means is that it is turning on fat burning despite any insulin. It just directly turns to fat. So high fructose corn syrup, boom, fat pill immediately. Fructose from fruit, despite the fact that there's fiber in there, if you have more than 20 or 30 grams, fat storage. All right, I rest my case there. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you do wanna be able to get foods that I recommend, like at the grocery store and things like that, I highly recommend you check out Thrive Market. Okay, I put a link down below because they have allowed me to create these specific bundles. So I've got hormone optimization uh, grocery packages, I've got keto grocery packages, I've got intermittent fasting grocery packages. These are all food items that I have assembled into boxes that would be what I would recommend getting at the grocery store, except you can get them through Thrive Market, which is an online membership-based grocery store. So I partnered up with them on this video. They're a huge sponsor of this channel. They make these videos possible, so don't hate me for that. Make sure you do check them out. I've been able to create some cool stuff. There's a link down below in the description after you watch this video, because we've got one more thing we need to cover that's very important. You'll want to check them out, and trust me, you won't be disappointed. Okay, let's go ahead and let's move into this next one. Totally wild, it's the microbiome and it's a curveball. Artificial sweeteners, yes. If you, again, operationalize the variable, you can find that when you look at the gut microbiome, artificial sweeteners are worse than a lot of sugars. Truly, I know that sounds crazy. Okay, the journal Nature published a study, and I've talked about this in other videos. They took a look at mice, and they gave mice artificial sweeteners, okay? And then what they did is they found that these mice developed glucose intolerance, meaning they weren't able to process glucose anymore, similar to like being insulin resistant. Well, they said, okay, this is bad, but let's go ahead and let's take the bacteria from these mice and let's give it to other mice that didn't have artificial sweeteners. So they transferred bacteria from artificial sweetener mice to non-artificial sweetener mice, and the non-artificial sweetener mice developed glucose intolerance just by receiving the bacteria from those that consumed artificial sweeteners. Whoa, okay, well, this is mice, sure. So let's take it one step further and take a look at humans. So then what they did is they took a look at seven humans that don't typically consume artificial sweeteners. They had them consume it for a few days, and what did they find? Well, once again, they found that they developed glucose intolerance. Oh my gosh, okay, clearly we're seeing something happening here. But then they took it another step further, okay? They took the bacteria from these humans that consumed artificial sweeteners, and they put them into mice, again, that haven't had artificial sweeteners. And guess what? Boom, glucose intolerance. Okay, so we've got cross-species interaction here. The bacteria is clearly a big part of our overall glucose metabolism. So would you say that you should have high fructose corn syrup over an artificial sweetener? If you're concerned about fat accumulation, then maybe not. But if you're concerned about your gut biome, you might want to reconsider things and look a little bit different, right? So that's, again, operationalizing the variable. What is the worst? What truly is your worst? What are you concerned with? So artificial sweeteners in this particular case, for those of you that want specifics, we're talking about acyl sulfate potassium, we're talking about saccharin, we're talking about sucralose, we're talking about aspartame. I highly recommend you switch it over to stevia, switch it over to monk fruit, a little bit of erythritol here and there, and quite frankly, a tiny bit of some kind of thing like honey, although there's a little bit of fructose in there, is gonna be a heck of a lot better for your gut than an artificial sweetener. So as always, please do keep it locked in here on my channel. I appreciate you guys being here and I appreciate you turning on those notifications and hitting that subscribe button so you can be a part of this community that is always furthering their education in the world of nutritional science and always just opting to be the best version of themselves. See you soon.